All right, we're going to take a look at the new Augum SJ1 soldering iron. You want to look at it too? Stick around. All right, here we got the Augum SJ1 soldering iron. Augum soldering iron model SJ1. Uh, input voltage 20 volts, 5 amps max. All right, so this is what you've got inside the box. All right, so here we have the manual. You know what? We still don't need no stinking manual. Let's just get that out the way for now. Now this is, look, before I say this is strange, let's get this box out of here. So it's a, okay, so it's a USB-C slash USB-A power cord and a USB-C to USB-C power cord. So you get two power cords. Oh, it's hard to get out. So it, yeah, uh, it is a C210 soldering tip, which I've never used an angled tip, but I'm, I've gotten these on these soldering irons because I really want to try them. Uh, I know I've, I've mentioned them before, but Sauron with uh, Teaching Electronics, I think it is, uh, that guy uses a angled tip and can do a lot of great stuff with it. And so, of course, if you have the same stuff that other people have, you can be as good as them. <laughs> Not. Okay, really, really don't like that. Let's see, let's try to push it back in there. And so that feels like it bottomed out. So let's look. And so it looks like it's all the way in. You can see the buttons moving as I'm... The whole assembly seems to be just flopping around inside there. Right now, off the bat, my concern would be this tip uh, to make sure that this tip is tight. Now, so just make sure you push it home. And so if it feels like it's stopped and you're not that you know that close to the to the tip then it is not uh, completely seated so you've got an inch and a half of stick out from this point to the end if you're there then you've got it seated into place this tip right here okay so apparently there's no screw included with the kit to uh, mount it but this right here would be a uh, static electricity guard uh, to mount to ground a piece of wire to connect to this right here so that by static electricity you don't discharge and, and damage or kind of ridiculous now but it, i mean but at least it does give you you can put your usb-c connection in the end of it or if you plug this in there and you're using the static strip you've got also adding a barrel jack connector connection to be able to uh, use a laptop power supply or something of that nature but I mean, I'm look. Tell, listen. Hopefully, you can see that. I'm not. I won't use that. I won't. I'm because I would be afraid with all that flip and flop there. My my biggest concern with this would be uh, damaging that USB C connection. Like which that one, you definitely don't. If you hurt that one, whatever. But you don't want to hurt that one. And would, knowing that the circuit board is not so so well stabilized inside this tube okay so it's telling me to plug the soldering iron tip in and hopefully you can see that and we already plugged it in so let's unplug this and pull the tip out and let's try it again this one looks neat, but it does not, it's not looking good for it. Okay.
Okay, so we, we've gotten it to turn on twice now. So it's asking me to click OK. So this is somewhat similar to the last last one that we looked at. I think it was uh, wrong one, maybe, uh, solder iron. So we'll hit OK. Low voltage. Look at there. So it says low voltage. All right. So let's pull it out of that and put it in the PD100. Okay, so that's fine. This is not a PD 3.1 cable. There. Oh, see there? It flashed for a minute that the tip wasn't in it. Oh, wow. This one is just not good. This one may not be in the, uh, the roundup. I may just file a, you let them see the video here and file a, uh, for a return. This is ridiculous. I mean, the head, see there? Just, just, you know, rattling it around. I mean, goodness. Okay. Let me see if I can let this tip cool, cool down and make sure I've got it seated properly. And then we'll, we'll come back. Okay, there's a tip that came with it. So what I'm going to do is I have uh, some tips that I got with the Finerci HSO2 soldering iron. So we are going to try one of them. This is exact. These are a little different tips with a smaller end. I don't know if that that's a, would make a difference, but we're going to try one of these tips first to see what it does. And uh, then we'll try this tip and just to make sure that maybe the tip's not faulty. And then each press of the OK cycles through, which we're going in standby. So each press of the OK, there we go, 300, then 350, then 400, then back to 300. So each press of the OK button will cycle through each of your presets. And then while in any of your presets, you can adjust forward or back. So... Let's just go to 350. There we are at 350 and it's stabilized. So it was jumping around a lot and I'm not sure what the cause of that was. And again, we're stable. Showing 6%. Now we're heat cooling back down to 300. And just in the middle of whatever you're doing, it goes into standby. And so now it's dropping into the 200 degree mark. And so it's uh, motion sensitive. So once it goes into standby, if you move it, so let's just set it there. So there it goes into standby. So you can, it can be on a table vibrating or something like that, and it seems like it st will stay in standby. But whenever you pick it up to start using it, there it goes to heat up. So I would recommend that you got your tip oriented so your buttons are out of the way for you to press them. And you can see the orientation and do the soldering. And I'm kind of moving this around, and this cable is pretty heavy. And, and I don't see it, I don't, I don't feel it affecting doesn't seem like it's causing anything to happen and okay so it's coming up in my opinion a little more maybe that tips defective maybe I'm not getting it seated properly I'm not entirely sure so but anyway I feel a whole lot better about that let's drop that out and let's try again with that tip so I want to put them side by side to make sure there's no difference in their length because you can see this one 
from the taper where it starts to the, the tip, we're looking at maybe three eighths of an inch at best. So we'll get that out. And so those tips are pretty much the same. So let's just scooch that over. And let's see if we can make this right. So it's, it's, this is, I'm feeling better about it, but this is also a negative uh, because the, the tips are kind of finicky to get in. I, I get it with that silicone sleeve. It's really nice. It holds the tip. You don't have to worry about it slipping or moving around, but it makes it harder to get it properly seated in there. And so I would say if you have any, which it doesn't look like that's warped at all. If you have this bent at all, then it takes it slightly out of alignment and it would probably be just a useless, a useless tip because it doesn't, uh, it's not going to seat properly in the solder iron. So let's look at it here. We're going to kind of be gentle with it. See it stopped there. Look at there. Okay. So it's just it's something with this tip. I don't get it. But even with the other tip, I did have to move it a little bit. So forget what I said about the half inch. If you, if you got, if you're where the taper starts here, or let's just do the measurements again. Um, from the end here is one to the very tip of this tip. Let's just say down to here is an inch. So it's about a quarter inch more for that tip. Uh, you're looking at one, two, three. Yeah, you're looking at about three-eighths of an inch from the top here into this taper. And that's what I would go by because it seems like these tips are about uniform, but the tips are going to be a little different depending on what kind of tip it is. Uh, these right here, for whatever reason, I would say because if you look here, you don't match up with the graduations as far as the... Uh, the um, iron itself so you have the tip here an insulator another shaft an insulator and the outer shaft so i'm not sure how these tips are put together or how they're made but whatever these tips are which i don't know this 210 ic 210is is this tip these were some that of course, Timu flashes up, hey, these are free. And they look like two tens. And I said, okay, I'll take those for free. And I shouldn't have. So you just have to be a little, uh, a little, a little careful to make sure you get that tip inserted right. And so the instructions, apparently they know that's a problem because the manufacturer actually put in their instructions, be sure to get the soldering iron tip seated, unfortunately. So again, let's let it power up, hit OK, and see it heats right up. Now let's go into the menu, and we are going to go through the menu, tip type, and of course I've also got the tip type set, set correctly now, so voltage, current, Temp unit, temperature increase, power on heating. You see it, it says off. So I'm going to change it to on. Now, get out of the menu. Let's unplug it. And I really don't think this would be a good soldering uh, cable because it's way too stiff. I mean, this thing right here is just extremely stiff. Let's put it back in. Okay, so it, I guess I, I guess I'm just dyslexic or something, uh, which I think I am.
to a certain extent probably. Uh, so that setting, I, I misinterpreted it. So this is what that setting is. Okay, so, and now that I look at it, power on heating does make sense. So what it's saying for this setting is when you plug power in, it immediately starts heating. I don't like that. I do not like that at all. So we're going to turn that back off. And so now it's set the way I would want it, and it makes sense to have that a default setting. So as soon as you apply power, you have power. It comes up, it boots up, it tells you whether it's got a tip or not, and that's all well and good. And it's going to tell you about the tip one way or another. But I do, I do not want one of these things because I'm going to tend to be holding it like this when I plug it in. And I don't want it heating up as soon as I plug this in. So... It's not, it doesn't really make sense to, to turn that all uh, turn that on because uh, you're gonna you're gonna a lot of times be holding this thing in your hand and you plug it in and it's gonna start heating and burn your hand before you realize it. I know it will me. I know I, I'll end up doing that. So uh, it seems to be no issues with the function of it now. So um, I really hate that I had problems with that tip in the beginning because it really makes the solder nine look worse than what I think it, it is. I've got a little more for it. I'm still not happy about the the inwards, but I bet you if I took the rest of them apart, they would probably, I don't know, they they may not be any better. Uh, the adapter here, I'm not happy about that being so flippy floppy. So that's just, that's a nice feature and it looks good. Maybe it sells more soldering irons, but... <clears throat> I, I, I would not I would not use that <clears throat> not at all um, I would just I would just not use this for a soldering iron that you're going to run around that you need to uh, maybe use a laptop power supply because uh, you're going to wind up th that being so easily movable <clears throat> it, at the very least they should extend the butt right here so that it fits more snugly into this recess and kind of makes a better lock up there or at uh, worst case scenario just build this piece onto it and leave it there make it part of the soldering iron i mean it doesn't add but maybe an inch to the length of the soldering iron which is not very long to begin with. so <clears throat> that's a definite fail so that definitely takes a a, a star away for me uh, not really happy about the accessories they're just an afterthought they're not really anything anything worth it um, so I think it's I think it's a lot better than I was in the very beginning of this I really hope you watch the video to this point so that you can you can realize this and I'm, I'm gonna try to put something in the beginning is uh, this uh, maybe the soldering iron is not as bad as it is in the beginning of the video. I don't, I don't know. But I'm going to try to put something up because I, I give this a bad rap in the very beginning because of the problems I was having, which are, are almost completely associated with the tip. And the tip was good. I just was not getting it properly seated. It felt like it was seated properly. I couldn't push it any further. Um, and, and if you try to force it in, you're going to damage something in here uh, because of the way it looks, the way the, the connectors are, are set up in here. So do not force it. But what you're going to want to do is to wiggle it a little bit as you're pushing it in, and you'll get it to go ahead and seat on up into the uh, soldering iron. And you'll know it's seated when it's almost all the way up in there. So, uh, so this is definitely a... Uh, just go ahead and... Man, pull that out let it cool. So this is it's definitely a whole lot better than uh, what what if it was at the beginning and I I really don't want to pull that out because these buttons are trying to tweak and I'm afraid I'm gonna jerk them out by uh, trying to pull it out so it's not a good thing uh, and I and I don't know if you can see down in there at all uh, I really hope you can so that we can uh, kind of uh, Maybe I can zoom in on it, and you can get a better idea of what you're you're trying to do when you're pushing that tip in there. Uh, but once you get it seated in there, it seems to be solid, seems to be good. You do not have to worry about that tip coming out. But if you take this off, make sure that you are very careful because of that silicone uh, bushing inside there. 
uh, that is what holds this tip securely in place. And so it will come out and you will lose it and you will have a headache because that tip will not be secure in this soldering iron. So uh, I'm, I'm probably going to set this at a, I'm going to give it a thumbs up and I'm probably going to give it uh, three and a half, four stars. Uh, now that I've, I've dealt with it some more and got it working properly. Uh, longevity, my concern, that's why I want to drop it down to three and a half, maybe three stars because of that tip, how it goes in there. I can see me being frustrated and, and damaging the internals of this soldering iron trying to get that tip to seat in there. Now, this is not a smart thing. And it's cool. Uh, I can definitely, it would be the way that without having a beveled um, in, inner section of this and a, a, a guide that perfectly aligns like the other ones do, they'll, they'll, they'll have a, a, a guide that'll, that tip will go straight down in, into place and it'll seat into place. If this right here, which I'm not telling you to do this because I don't know if it would cause any problems. I don't think it would, but I would almost be tempted to take for, th for this soldering iron. So far, none of the other ones, but just for this one, I would take this tip and I would try to just work it on a whetstone or something and kind of round that shoulder just a little bit so that it's not such a, a flat, uh, sharp shoulder. And I think it will help. To, to get that tip properly seated in there. So uh, let's see, let's just try to put it in there one more time. Cause see, I'm able to tweak it like that right there. Cause that bushing isn't, that, that rub, that uh, silicone bushing is not giving me, a, you know, serving as a good guide. And see it stops right there. But then when you get in here and you wiggle it, you get it on into place, and it seats right on where it needs, and that's that's in there right, and it works perfect then. So uh, that's what I have right now. I, I do hope that this serves you in some way, and it is helpful. Uh, if it's not helpful, tell me, so I can I can get better. I want to grow at this and get better at this because I want to help you guys. Uh, and, and you've heard me say it before, I want to help YouTube the way YouTube has helped me over the years. So, uh, I appreciate you spending your, uh, your precious time with me. And I thank you. And God bless.